Alrighty, well, uh, I'm going to do a decode on the movie Bull Durham. Um, there is a ton of 9-11 references and 8 references, all kinds of stuff. Right, this, this movie is a 1988 movie. Um, it stars Susan Sarandon, Kevin Costner, and uh, Tim Robbins. And um, right off the bat here, um, Susan Sarandon talks about how she believes in uh, the Church of Baseball. And um, there's a hundred and, I think she's 108 beads on the rosary or something she says. And then um, there's also 108 stitches on the baseball. And then she talks about, all throughout the movie she uh, talks about all the New Age religions like multiple times. Basically the whole movie is that it's about Kevin Co- uh Tim Robbins is this good pitcher, but he's he's got control issues. And they bring in Kevin Costner, the old catcher, to uh, teach him discipline and to make him a better baseball player. Um, and then Susan Sarandon is like the lady that works for the team, and she like has sex with one of the members on the team uh, every year. And Kevin Costner's, like, in love with her, and she loves him, but yet she still has sex with the younger guy. And it's just kind of a, a little love triangle. But uh, that's just the point of the movie. So I've been, I talked about um, 55 and 59. Um, and a lot of times when people are this age, or at least with William Defoe for sure, um, but this number comes up a lot. And it has to do with um, playing the Antichrist in movies and other things. Um, Kevin Costner actually happens to be 59 this year, and born in 55, and also born on 118, which is 11-8, so 88. And that movie was in 1988. This is his filmography here. Um, I talk about in the movies, a lot of times there's always a prank or. And he plays Frank Farmer in The Bodyguard. So you got your 66 with the two Fs and a Frank again. I've actually never watched this movie, surprisingly. Um, but I know, uh, like, Whitney Houston died, was in it and she died and all that. And I just find this interesting. He played a real life guy named Jim Garrison. And Jim Garrison. Well, he did, he died in 92, which is 22 years ago. It's just interesting to me because I live about 19 miles away, and that's like the town you go to when to go to Walmart or whatever. Um, it's kind of weird. Uh, I could go on and on about him probably. Um... Like, he's in Waterworld and uh, all the Neptune references this year. Just, uh, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of other stuff. But I'm going to move on so I can actually, I'm going to talk about Tim Robbins a tiny bit. And then I'm going to actually show the movie and talk about it. I guess um, the only thing I think about Tim Robbins is Howard the Duck. And, um, oh, it's the Shawshank Redemption. And then I just did a video about Mitch Hedberg. And he actually has a skit, and it always reminds me of this guy because he talks about going into, like, Applebee's or something, and they say, do frames, do frames, and they're not there. And then he said, then they call the next name, and they said, but what happens to the, to the defrains or whatever? Uh, you know, somebody kidnapped them, or I don't know. It's, you got to listen to it. But the Dufresne, I've never really heard that name except for Shawshank Redemption. I'm sure it's a popular name. It's just... It just reminds me of that, so that's why I think of Tim Robbins. Anyway, also, it reminds me of Howard the Duck. Um, and I went to Howard the Duck here. I just um, remembered Beverly and Howard and whatnot. And Beverly was played by Leah Thompson, the mom on To the Future. And uh, anyway, I seen her picture here, and I seen the 08. And it was for the No Hate campaign, which is like the uh, the gay marriage thing in, I think, California or 
I never really read through here very much, but um, it's Proposition 8, and then their slogan was like, no hate, and it's H888, no 88, or, I mean, it's just crazy. Um, anyway, I'm going to go back to the movie, but just weird that you find stuff like that off of just basically doing nothing. Okay, well, they flash a ton of um, 26s throughout this movie, um, but that's not all, honestly. Um, anyway, on the uniform here, it's they always show the D and the D, which is your 4 and your 4, your 44 reference. Um, the mascot is also the bull, and um, there's a part later on in the movie where they hit a home run and it lights the bull's eyes up and they're red and whatever, but basically... The whole movie is, you know, the crowd has to worship the bulls. I don't know. It's it's pretty deep, I guess. And the first pitch that he throws, he throws it clear, crazy out of the way. But she uh, gets the speed and she comes over and says, 95 miles an hour. So you got your 95, your 59. There, It's a ton of 95s and 59s in this movie, too. And it makes sense because it's the bull. Um. The guy pitching is actually number 37, and here's the first time they flash 26, and here's him as number 37. So they bring in Kevin Costner, and uh, they tell him that the pitcher, his last five pitches were faster than his first five pitches. So there's a 55 reference. So they bring in Kevin Costner, and they, uh, they tell him why he's brought in there, and he's mad about it. Uh, but he knows that won't happen. And they're just using him. But they tell him it's... I don't know if my mic's working or not. Sears was uh, actually based in the Sears Tower. And then um, earlier in this movie, they remember I said they talked about uh, the 108 beads on the rosary and 108 stitches on the baseball, which is actually 216 double stitches, which is 6 times 6 times 6. But look at the Sears Tower. 108 stories. Also, it was... Completed and built in 1973, and it's on 41 degrees north, um, which is 40 in 1941, 73 years ago. This was built in 1973 on 41 degrees north, 108 I talked about, and Sears is now headquartered in Hoffman Estates, Illinois, and Hoffman... It was incorporated in 1959. There's your another 95, 59, 666. Also says here, the first Sears catalog was published in 1888. I know it seems ridiculous, but they know the movies all over the place. And uh, right here, this girl comes up to him and says, hey, I'm Millie. And he, who are you? And he says, I'm Tony. I play second base. Second base is 2B. A B is second letter, 22. And it seems ridiculous, but it's like a scene that makes no sense. It, it doesn't even need to be in the movie. It's just a little filler. And so they have to throw, they throw in a number with it. Uh, right here, this guy, he uh, holds up the Bible and tells everybody in the locker room that he's going to be holding a daily Bible study thing at 3 o'clock. And basically everybody is like, you need to get laid. Like, it really makes no sense with the movie <laughs> at all. They just throw it in there. Like, um, they're making fun of this guy, basically, in the movie. Um, it's just weird. And here they're flashing the 26 once again. All right, and right here, as number 44 is pitching, um, it's the beginning of the game, the first game when... Uh, Kevin Costner and Tim Robbins actually played together, 
which I'm going to get to that in a second. But number 44 is pitching. Um, and the announcer announces, don't forget, Saturday is Bull Day, which is a total um, Saturn Bull God reference. Saturn L. L. Um, yeah, it's not that hard to look up, I guess, but it's a total reference to that. Don't forget, Saturday is the Bull Day. It is. Right here, uh, this guy's using a chicken bone cross um, to do vo- to do voodoo to get the evil spirits out of his bat or whatever. And this guy's like, yeah, let me touch my bat on there, and he won't let him. Um, but anyway, it just reminded me of all during the baseball season and uh, all the crazy stuff that happened this year, and, like with Mustakas hitting the uh, home runs and whatnot. And we wondered how it was done. Well... Maybe it was voodoo. I don't know. Also, like, throughout the movie, they never really bring this back up. They just kind of flash this. It has nothing really to do with the plot whatsoever. Um, except for at the very end, uh, his girlfriend or something puts a curse on his glove and they lose or something. But other than that, they don't really bring it up. It has no point to really even be in the movie. Um, the first game that they actually show, Kevin Costner playing catcher, and Tim Robbins pitching. Uh, it literally Tim Robbins throws a pitch, so he's number thirty-seven. Kevin Costner's number eight, and the first pitch is number eleven, and he he hits the ball or whatever. So on the first pitch, or that they show at least. Anyway, so you got thirty-seven, eleven, and eight. So eight, eleven, eighty-eight, thirty-seven. Pretty crazy. Uh, here's a quick shot, just proving that Kevin Costner. Uh, where's number eight and they do show it again i'm sure i just wanted to point it out really quick uh this is the part where the guy hits the home run and it hits the bowl and it lights up the eyes um anyway whole point is his number the guy who hit a home run was number 23 this guy that just hit the home run too his name's burt brooks bb 22 88 all right and they keep losing all the time so the coach gets mad and he throws the bats and gets everyone in the shower and he says, what's our record? And this guy says, 8 and 16. And then he goes, how did we ever win 8? And he goes, it's a miracle. I mean, so 8's a miracle, I guess. Right here, Tim Robbins is singing a song called Try a Little Tenderness. And he's messing up the words. Um, she may get wooly. And Kevin Costner gets mad because it's uh, she gets weary. And anyway, I looked up the song here. The uh, right by Otis Redding um, on the single from 1966. Um, so I clicked on Otis Redding. He didn't actually write the song, but he owns the rights to the song. And he was born in 1941, 73 years ago. He also died at age 26. So he made a cover of it, and he owns the rights. But the song was actually written by Harry M. Woods and a couple other guys, but he actually wrote it, and the other guys are like, they help out, I guess, as what I was reading through here. But anyway, um, this guy, the guy who actually wrote the song, died at age 73. Even more interesting is he he was died on January 14th, which is 1-1-4. One, one, so, 11 times 4 is 44 in 1970, which is 44 years ago. The song was also performed by a studio orchestra during the opening credits of Dr. Strangelove. Um, this film was directed, produced, and co-written by Stanley Kubrick. And he died on March 7th, 37. Also... Uh, it was based off of a book called Red Alert by Peter George. Peter George died 6-1 of 66. And then Kevin Costner takes, so Kevin Costner takes away his guitar and uh, he tells him he's pissing away his career or whatever. And he says, I'm not pissing it away. I own a Porsche, a 911 quadroponic something something but there's a 9-11 reference right there and there's more later on 
I'm going to make a part two, so uh, stay tuned. And keep in mind, Iron Maiden.